of the RAF station at Aldergrove, a Viking of the Queen's flight brought Her Majesty and the Duke of Edinburgh on their coronation visit to Northern Ireland. The Queen and the Duke, who wore his Marshal of the Royal Air Force uniform, were received by Lord Wakehurst, the Governor. Her Majesty's inspection of the very smart Guard of Honour now followed. Okay, was charmingly presented by three-year-old Kara Koot, the daughter of the station commander. After His Excellency had presented the Prime Minister, Lord Brookborough, greetings were exchanged with a number of prominent personalities. Though the welcome to the royal visitors here was official, it was very warm-hearted. And when the many presentations had been completed, the Queen and the Duke began their drive to Government House Hillsborough, where they were to stay two nights. The route lay through Lisbon, where thousands of loyal subjects were waiting to offer a rousing welcome to the royal pair. A halt indeed was made at Lisbon, and when members of the local council had been presented, the Queen received another bouquet, this time from young Kathleen Anna Irwin. And for the Duke, there was a gift of Irish linen. That night at Government House, following the traditional welcome to royalty by the Lambeck drummers, the Queen and the Duke had a talk with two of them, Garfield Matchett and Daniel Crooks. Then the drumming went on in the grounds of Government House. Next morning, Her Majesty and the Duke went to the capital of Northern Ireland, an early engagement being at Queen's University. Here they were received by the Chancellor, Lord Allenbrook, and with him proceeded to the Sir William Whitler Hall for the presentation ceremony. Here the Queen shook hands with many representatives of Ulster's public life. Presently, the royal visitors drove to the city hall, where great crowds had gathered to greet their sovereign and her husband. They were welcomed by the Lord Mayor, Alderman Percival Brown, who received the honour of knighthood on this memorable occasion, and Her Majesty inspected the guard of honour provided by representative service units. Queen and the Duke then took luncheon in the City Hall with the Lord Mayor and Corporation. In the afternoon, they paid a visit to the Royal Ulster Agricultural Society's showgrounds at Balmoral, where ex-service organisations were to be inspected. In the great arena, some 20,000 members of youth organisations had assembled, and certainly Ulster's younger generation maintained a great tradition of enthusiastic loyalty to the crowd. Day was a visit to Parliament buildings where loyal addresses to Her Majesty were presented. The Queen and the Duke left, accompanied by the Prime Minister and Lady Brookborough, after the impressive ceremony. The climax.